Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Nephrology. In previous videos, we talked about nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome. Today, it's a very important topic in kidney diseases, which is treatment of hyperkalemia. What's the normal serum potassium concentration? It is between 3.5 and 5 milliequivalents per liter. Above 5 is called hyperkalemia whose job is to get rid of excess potassium, the kidney. But what if I have kidney disease? Of course, I will be more likely to develop hyperkalemia. Why is this a big deal? Because calcium problems equals cardiac problems. Remember that potassium was responsible for the resting membrane potential. You mess around with this and you can get arrhythmias. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Please recall that potassium is more abundant intracellularly relative to extracellularly. Potassium is the major cation in the ICF, or intracellular fluid. Why is that? It's thanks to the lovely sodium potassium ATPase. It pushes sodium to the outside, and it pushes potassium to the inside. That's why there is more potassium inside the cell relative to outside. If I tell you that there is a class of medications known as beta agonists, one example is albuterol, that actually stimulates the sodium potassium ATPase, which means we will push more sodium to the outside and more potassium to the inside. When you push more potassium to the inside, you will leave less potassium outside, a condition known as hypokalemia, low potassium in the blood. Why is it called calcium? because it's an alkaline substance, such as potassium alkali. The word alkali is derived from an Arabic word, alkaloi, similar to the word algebra. Next, let's talk about the normal function of insulin in the feeding state. Insulin pushes five people into the cell and away from the blood. Of course, it pushes glucose in. Does anyone remember GLUT4 transporter? which is insulin-dependent. But that's not it. You will push glucose in to make carbohydrates. How about pushing amino acids in to build up proteins? How about pushing free fatty acids in to build up triglycerides? Because what's the target cell when it comes to insulin? Skeletal muscles and adipose tissue. Insulin feeds the muscle and feeds the fat. Eat too much sugar, insulin will work harder to push all of that glucose inside and you will end up becoming fat, literally. So if I have too much insulin, what's going to happen to my potassium level? Well, all of the potassium will be hiding in the cell, leaving less potassium in the blood, i.e. hypokalemia. What if I have no insulin or insulin resistance? Then potassium is not pushed to the inside, potassium will stay outside, causing hyperkalemia. With that in mind, let's talk about the treatment of hyperkalemia. First of all, protect the heart from arrhythmia. Calcium problems, cardiac problems. How do I protect the heart? Stabilize the membrane of the cardiac myocyte. How do I do that? If you have watched my previous videos on nerve physiology, you will recall that calcium is a membrane stabilizer. Calcium is contra-excitability. How come? You can think of it simply as two cations competing with each other. The more calcium, the less sodium activity. And since sodium is responsible for depolarization and activation, with too much calcium, you will get less activation of the cardiac myocyte, i.e. less arrhythmias. Watch my nerve physiology series to learn more. Remember, calcium is contra-excitability. Don't believe me? Recall tetany. Tetany is low calcium. When calcium is low, what's going to happen to nerve excitability? It's going to go up because calcium is contra-excitability. That's why in tetany, my serum calcium is low, but my nerve excitability is high. What do I get? Carpal spasms, pedal spasms, all kinds of spasms. These are nerve excitabilities. How else can I treat hyperkalemia? Give insulin. Why? To push that potassium into the cell and lower potassium in the blood. But don't forget to give glucose with insulin, because if you give insulin alone without glucose, the patient will also develop what? Hypoglycemia, which is not fun. Next, you can give the patient diuretics. All of the diuretics will waste the potassium in the urine, except potassium sparing diuretics. So spare me your crocodile tears and spare the patient this class of medications. Do not give spironolactone, a player renowned triamterene amyloride. 
Other than that, you can give loop diuretics like ferrosamide, you can give thiazide diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide, etc. Next, can I give a medication that stimulates the sodium potassium ATPase to push more potassium inside the cell, leaving less potassium outside? Absolutely. Can I bind the potassium with a potassium binding resin known as kayexalate? This is a doofus piece of melana that will bind potassium in the gut and not let go until both kayexalate and potassium are excreted in the stool. Why are we doing this? Because your normal diet contains potassium. If you have hyperkalemia, do you want to add more? No, so spare me. Kayexalate is for kalium, which is potassium. And exalate reminds me of laxative. Oh, it's like a laxative for potassium. It gets rid of potassium in the stool. Next, when everything hits the fan, it's time for dialysis. If the kidney is not going to do it naturally, we will do it artificially. Please do me a favor and memorize these six steps of treating hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia is associated with acidosis. Do you know why? Also, acidosis is associated with hyperkalcemia. You know why? Why does vomiting cause hypokalemia? Why does any extracellular fluid volume depletion cause hypokalemia? What is high anion gap metabolic acidosis? What is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis? What's the anion gap of the serum? What's the osmolar gap of the serum? What's the anion gap of the urine? What's base excess? What's base deficit, etc.? Learn about all of this by downloading my acid base imbalance course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn more facts about potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, and chloride, download my electrolytes course. After you learn, it's time to practice. You need a question bank in your life. I recommend TrueLearn because they let you choose the difficulty of the questions on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the easiest and 10 the most difficult, so that you can practice your way up to perfection. They have questions in anatomy, physiology, embryology, biochemistry, biostatistics, physiology, pharmacology, pathology, all the branches of internal medicine surgery, pediatrics, OBGYN, and more. You can even answer questions based on a singular topic, for example, hyperkalemia or tuberculosis. So click on this link in the description box and try them out. Use promo code medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.